Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Corey, and welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. Now, in today's video, we are going to be going over three things, and these three things we go over here on the channel each and every single day. So if you guys are brand new, then you guys know what to do if you guys want to make sure that you guys are uh, getting informed as soon as possible about these three things. And that's going to be Madame Nazar's location for today, all of the different cycles and their collection sets. And then last but not least, we're going to go over all of the daily challenges in extensive detail so that you guys can make as much gold as possible here in Red Dead Online each and every single day. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and start off yeah, with uh, Madame Nazar's location, and she is actually located in Blue Water Marsh, so not too far south of where we currently are located in Van Horn, but uh, either the fast travel location will be Van Horn or La Gra, and you can make your way over to her location. But if this is the only thing that you guys came here for today, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated, and a thumbs up does mean a lot to me because, honestly, if it helped you guys out, it might help out somebody else and it shows a lot of support to the channel and honestly it keeps me doing these videos each and every day for you guys as well but i do have a live stream that i do uh every monday wednesdays and fridays and if you guys want to check out the times for those then make sure that you guys are checking out my website which is gamercory.com and i do live stream on other days as just that i didn't mention the tuesday thursday saturday and sundays and those are completely random times so if you guys want to make sure that you guys are getting notified when i do go live to that i'm going to give you guys a couple different ways number one is subscribe to the channel with all bell notifications turned on number two make sure that you guys are following me over on twitter or number three make sure that you guys are checking my website each and every single day which again is gamercory.com honestly the quickest and uh, fastest way of doing that to get notified is just subscribing to the channel with all bell notifications turned on all right so let's go ahead and move on to the different collection sets and their cycles i do like to start starting with the coins or the lost jewelry just to make the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time possible both sets will make you about 540 dollars an hour which is pretty amazing however both the coins and the lost jewelry do require you to have the field shovel and also the metal detector so just keep that in mind so if you don't have either of those then just go ahead and listen to a little bit later in the uh video because we're going to get to that the coins are going to be a part of cycle number one for today and then the lost jewelry will be a part of cycle number five now as i was previously previously mentioning if you guys don't have enough money or just don't have enough xp for the roll or whatever it actually might be that you're not able to get the coins or the lost jewelry these next four sets are going to be for you guys we have the american wildflowers which is going to be a part of cycle number four the tarot cards, which are going to be a part of cycle number six. We have the antique alcohol bottles, which are going to be a part of cycle number six. And then last of that four group is going to be bird eggs. Now, you don't actually don't even have to be a collector at all to collect those four sets. But you have to make sure that you sell them once you hit 10. Otherwise, you're just not going to be able to collect anymore. And then at that point, you're just kind of leaving money on the table. And honestly, if you're not a collector by the time that you get four sets of each of those ones that I just mentioned then you need to buy it because it will seriously make you a ton of money. Um, if anybody knows anything about gold and money, I think that would be me here in Red Dead Online. Uh, definitely take what I'm saying. Uh, you'll make a ton of money with the collector rule. Now, the last two sets that you do have to be a collector at as well is going to be the arrowheads, which does require the field shovel, which is going to be a part of cycle number five. And then we have the family heirlooms, which are going to be a part of cycle number one for today. Now let's go ahead and move on to the daily challenges. In my opinion, the daily challenges are the best way of earning gold here in Red Dead Online. You can earn up to 11 gold bars, and there are a couple different requirements that are needed in order to get up to those 11 gold bars. I'm about to go over those right now for you guys. Number one, you have to have a daily challenge streak. Actually, it just kind of popped up. Continue your streak. You have to have a 21-day streak every uh, with completing at least one daily challenge within those 21 days. Now, the next thing that you guys are going to need is make sure that you guys have all of the rolls purchased with at least a rank 10 in each of those rolls as well, because that will allow you to have access to three additional daily challenges. And that way you can actually earn up to that 11 gold bars. You can earn five gold bars from the daily challenge, the daily general challenges, and you can earn six gold bars from the daily roll challenges. And my cat is visiting me apparently and trying to sit on my lap. So anyway, um, now I don't look at these 
that every day so i don't know what they are going into the video but there's always one and i repeat always one that you guys can finish in a quicker amount of time than it takes you to actually log into red dead online so let's go ahead and find out what that is now if you guys um you know need help with any of these i do go over these each and every single day as i was mentioning earlier in the video and uh yeah let's just kind of get on into it so the daily challenges for today, actually, let's pull up to the side of the road. That's what I was trying to do, but my horse decided to go the other way for whatever reason. Uh, we have five chain picker rolls, crafted a tonic, fresh produce eaten, milkweed picked. Okay, so looking at this, I would actually have to say that these three, the crafted, a tonic, is going to be the easiest. We have fresh produce eaten, and we have five milkweed picked. Which are going to be the three easiest ones for the day. Um, crafted a tonic. Um, all you have to do is get off your horse. Now, most of these do require you guys to be next to a campfire. There's a lot of different campfires all around uh, the world that you guys can use. You can use one at your camp. You can use one. There's in Valentine. There's two in San Denis. There's one in Rhodes. Actually, there's a couple right around Rhodes. Um, there's one in a house behind in Blackwater. There's also some by, down by Tumbleweed area, not in Tumbleweed, but around Tumbleweed and things like that. And then like any gang hideouts that you'll find, um, some of the bootlegger missions, if you're a moonshiner rule, will all be able to um, have campfires. So lots of opportunities that way. Just go over your tonic section in your crafting area. Oh, and this one actually oh, does require a campfire. So I don't think there's any that don't if I remember right. So I just have to make my way over to a campfire and then choose these and then just make sure that you have whatever you're looking for and then go ahead and use it. And I'm guessing that I'm not able to make these because I probably already have a ton of them. So there we go. So that's that one. That's going to be pretty easy. But again, just have to find a campfire. Uh, the next one that's going to be easy is the fresh produce eaten. Now, the way to do this is go into your satchel here. Go over to your provisions. Find the produce, which... Let's see, do I even have any... Here, it should count. There we go. So that's how you would actually get that one taken care of. Um, fresh produce can be bought from any or bought from any of the stable areas. Um, and some of it can be purchased from your catalog and then it'll be sent to your post office and things like that. So otherwise, yeah, you're looking at like the pears, the actual carrots, not the wild carrots won't count. You have apples. Um, that's pretty much what I have on me. So again, all those will kind of count for you. And then to see five of them. Now, the next one that was going to be easy is going to be the milk weed, weed picked. And that's going to be down by Saint Denis. Now... They're, the best place to actually do the milkweed is along with Oleander Sage. I mean, you can find these in a lot of other places if you guys are really wanting to go out and explore. Um, but I'm just kind of giving you guys two locations that I prefer to go to. Number one is right along this area. You're going to find, like I said, Oleander Sage and milkweed in this area. And then number two is actually in the Heartland Overflow. You'll actually find a whole bunch of milkweed as well and a ton of mint. There's, if you guys are looking to stock up on mint, that's a great location to go as well. But those are two of my go-to locations. So if you guys use something else or a different location in general, then by all means, leave a comment down below because we're all about sharing is caring here on this channel. Make sure that you guys are helping out somebody else if, uh, if you guys would really, really like to. But that is all of the milkweed locations that I think that I really need to kind of go over for today. Um... I'm just trying to think. I mean, most of the milkweed, honestly, is kind of like the east of the Heartland Overflow anyway. And most of it, honestly, is in Lemoyne area, pretty much around like the bayou and the Blue Water Marsh area. You could probably even find some right where Mad Mazar is at for today. Now, the I would say Chain Picker will be... It's going to be easy, but it's going to be time-consuming. So I don't want to say it's like super easy, but if you're really into fishing, fishing, I mean, you're going to make some extra money and you can make, you can get some, you know, flaky fish and things like that. If you break down some of them, um, but they will be more attracted to, I believe it is corn bait. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. I don't want to say that I know that for a fact. Um, 
but I like to go fishing for these guys. Uh, you can actually do these in a couple different locations because um, they do spawn quite um, in a lot of different areas. You can actually find them down here, just they're not as abundant. Um, you can find some uh, like along this coast here, but I will specifically be going along the Dakota River and actually I'll be doing it right about in this general area. That's where I usually always go for the pickerel, even the redfin pickerel. Um, but the problem with them, especially if you're using like a specific food for bait, is you're going to catch more than just, you know, the chain pickerel. You're going to catch redfin pickerel. You could have a chance with bluegill and rock bass and even smallmouth bass, especially if you go to this location. Because there's no location anywhere on the map where it's just chain pickerel. Otherwise, you guys can go to Lake Owangila. That would work as well. Aurora Basin would work. Um, the upper or lower Montana rivers. Either of them would all be opportunities. It just really depends on where you guys want to go. And heck, you can even go right across the street from the Butcher in Blackwater if you guys really, really, really want to. All right, the next on the list was a couple PvP items, which is uh, kill two players with a bow in, or three players with a bow in uh, free roam events. So you could use explosive uh, or dynamite arrows would work really well for this one. Um, so that would be relatively easy. Um, if you're not really into PvP, then obviously that one and this one are not going to be for you guys. We have three player kills with throwing weapons and showdowns. So the best one to do this one is if you guys can get into like name your weapons or name your uh, name your weapons teams. Just because they give you a tomahawk each and every time. And that's a way that you guys can get better at it. So if you're just trying to earn gold for whatever maybe you're trying to purchase. Especially if you haven't purchased one of the rolls that you really want because they're discounted this week then every showdown that you are involved with, you're going to get paid an extra 0.16 gold bars for regardless of how well you do in it. So it is a great opportunity to at least get a little bit better, and it's honestly another great opportunity to go ahead and get at least to get a little extra gold. But if you're not into PvP, I completely understand that, and maybe these two you just don't want anything to do with. And then last but not least is going to complete three posse races. Now this does require you to be in a posse with somebody else. You can either be in theirs or they can be in yours. It doesn't really matter. And then basically what you do is you pull up your map, mark a spot that's not super far away, but fairly decent away. And then basically race there with your other posse member. And then what you would do is nobody really gets anything for winning. Um, you just ride to whatever location that you marked. And then after you complete the third one, both of you guys will get up to that 0.5 gold bars. Now, the next ones on the list are going to be the daily rule challenges. Now, a lot of these are relatively easy, but they might look a little bit different than what you guys have just because I'm in rank 20 in each of my rules. So if they are different, do you have any questions? Then by all means, leave a comment down below so that somebody can help you out. And I'll do my best to do that for you guys. We have to make $200 of money made from selling moonshine. Uh, this is going to be any of the special re recipes at strong quality. Um, you can make $247.50 if you sell them, as long as you make sure that you have all of your bottles intact. So that's not too bad. We do have to change the decor. So the one of two ways you can do that is change like one of the paintings in the moonshine bar itself, or you can actually change the entire theme, but that does cost you gold. So if you've already purchased one, then just change it back to the basic or just change one of the painting around and that will actually solve that problem and you're going to get up to that 0.5 gold. And then you play with the band for two minutes. Now, the nice thing about playing with the band for two minutes, two times each, so a total of four minutes, is once you start playing with the band, you can actually just walk away from the controllers if you need to, like, grab yourself a beverage or a snack or whatever it is. Do something around the house when you come back. That one will be all completed for you. And, heck, you can even start your moonshine. So that way you can actually stand inside the moonshine area, let the moonshine basically produce for you, start playing with the band, and then walk away. And then when you come back, the moonshine might be done, and then you can actually go off and delivering it. The next one is going to be the trader roll. We have to sell two goods delivered to a distant buyer. Um, I don't really ever participate in the distant one just because it takes long longer, and I'm all about effective uh, use of my time and generating the most amount of gold in the shortest amount of time possible. But it's completely up to you guys. You just have to make sure that you have two goods to be able to sell. Obviously, if you sell just one good, not going to work. If you sell 100 goods, it'll work just fine. Um, next one is going to have six perfect carcasses donated to Crips. You can do this um, basically just looking for the three-star qualities. If it's small or medium carcass, then use your varmint rifle. And if it's a larger um, carcass, then use like a bolt-action rifle, Springfield rifle, Carcano, or Rolling Black rifle. And all of those should be just fine. And the last one is to donate uh, 10 small ammo carcasses. Now, these are going to include Western Chipmunks, Squirrels, Toads, Bullfrogs, 
bats, rats, um, any of the smaller birds, including crows. So like it'd be Orioles, wax wings, blue jays, um, things like that. Pretty, pretty much uh, go to the Great Plains just east of Blackwater and you're going to find a ton of them. And same thing around the Heartland Overflows. The Heartland Overflow. The next one is to uh, participate with the Collector Roll. We have three American Wildflowers found, which the American Wildflowers for today are going to be a part of cycle number four. You have to find a total of six collectibles. So it doesn't matter what six you go after, just collect six. And then you have to sell three to Man Mazar. It can be three that you already have in your inventory. You could sell an entire set, but you have to make sure that you sell them directly to Mad Mazar in Blue Water Marsh today. Otherwise, it will not count. You can't sell them via the post office, you have to sell them directly to her. There was a time and a place where you actually were able to do that, but not anymore. And the last one is going to be the Bounty Hunter roll, which is the only roll that does pay out additionally in gold, which is pretty amazing. We have three bounty targets brought in in total. We have three bounty targets hogtied with the reinforced lasso. If you're using anything but a reinforced lasso with being a bounty hunter, you need to buy it as soon as you possibly can. As soon as you get the money, buy it. If you don't have enough money, then again, listen to my comment earlier about becoming a collector and making a ton of money. Um, so these two actually go together because you're hog tying them and then you're bringing them in. Um, and then we have two bounty targets tagged with the tracking arrow. The only time that you're ever going to use the tracking arrows is honestly for daily challenges. However, it does require you to have a pamphlet in order to craft them. And it costs you like $600 to get that pamphlet. So if you don't have the money, don't buy it. If you have the money that you can spare and you've purchased everything that you guys want, at least for the time being, then go ahead and buy it because, like I said, it's a waste of money and the only time you're ever going to use it is for daily challenge. But that is all the daily challenges done, gone over, and covered. If you guys do have any questions regarding them, then by all means, leave a comment down below because I want to help you guys out the best that I possibly can. But if you did enjoy the video or found it helpful in any way, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. And also don't forget to check out my live streams every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays and other times designated on my website, which again is GamerCorey.com, or making sure that you guys are subscribed with all bell notifications turned on. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it, and you guys stay gaming.